2020 vision. As I mentioned before, um, towards the end of the year, um, I think if anybody didn't didn't touch this, I don't think that 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 you have something as 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 well put together as this and miss it. It's 2020. If you don't talk about 2020 vision, man, I don't, I don't know. If you need to go back and check and see if you're really called by the Lord. <clears throat> but I want to talk about vision from a different standpoint. I'm going to talk about vision in, in a dual place over this month. I'm going to talk about God's vision for us here. Yes, yes. And then on Wednesday night, we're going to take a biblical approach of how to create the vision that God has for you. So we're going to kind of look at it on both sides. Learning God's vision for us, but then understanding that we have a responsibility as well. Um, but I want the reason why I want to talk about God's vision for us is because I really believe that it is important for us to know uh, that God does have a vision for us. But before we get into that, this is the word church. And I don't want to take for granted that everybody knows what vision is. Um, so we're going to we're going to take a little, a little word study real quick. Vision. What is vision? Vision is the act or power of seeing. Sight. Vision. You can see. That's vision. When you go to the doctor, you know, maybe where you come from, you say you're going to get your eyes checked. <laughs> Other people say they're going to get their vision checked. You know, uh, same thing, same thing. Um, second thing is, vision is something seen in a dream or a trance. A supernatural appearance that conveys a revelation. Wow, wow. So this takes it a step further, which means it's more than just something that I see, but it's something that I see. And I don't want you to think that that's an oxymoron, but it is the truth. It's more than what I see. It's actually what I see. I pray this year, one and two, become synonymous with each other. The things that I saw that's conveying a revelation, I'm going to see them with my sight. Okay, okay. Um, um, number three, vision is a thought. It's a concept. It's an, it's an object formed by the imagination. It's, an, it's, a, it's a thought. It's a concept. It's an object formed by the imagination. Basically, if you, can, if you can think it and you can believe it, you can see it. If you can think it, if you can have the thought, uh, it's, it's a thought. It's a concept. It's an object formed by the imagination, by the imagination. I'm going to get into this in just a, 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 little, a little bit. But the word imagination, um, uh, the, 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 the word starts with an I. Yeah. <laughs> imagination uh, is a word uh, that was created from the word image. Image, imagination. Your imagination is built on images, yeah. pictures. So the first thing that I'll tell you is, is that if you want a different thought process, you have to see different things. Yeah. <sighs> There's a statement that has been said. I don't know if I came up with it because I heard somebody else say it, uh, but let's just say it's mine for, for, for the sake of time. Um, exposure expands expectation. Exposure expands expectation. Exposure expands expectation. What does that mean, Pastor Jay? If you are exposed to more, it expands your expectation. So if the only thing that you have been exposed to, if the only thing that you have been exposed to is payday loans, 
you'll never understand what a Roth IRA is. You'll start to believe that that's for them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of where I'm going to stay right here. Um, I told y'all I'm practicing on my... Uh, I ain't going to say his name because I don't want nobody... Listen, man, you know, because, man, my vision this year, man, I'm going to be on some stages that are going to be bigger and larger. And so I can't always scream at the people. Because I, I, have, I have done that. I mean, I don't know how I do it, man. I'll be in professional settings, and before I know it, I have said, and the, uh, whoa. Um, in a book that I read, it has 66 books in the book. There's a writer that says, I, I, it's the preacher is in me, so I'm practicing. Um, so if y'all want me to holler or, or hoop, um, uh, there's a whole bunch of hoopages on YouTube. So go www.youtube.com backslash the word church. Whole bunch of hoopages. Um, oh, yeah. Um, you can cool. You can keep it right there. Uh, but imagination, the word imagination, say imagination. imagination. And I'm just going to touch it right here, but I'm going to come back in about 10 minutes and I'm going to try to put a little bit more into it. Imagination. The word starts with an I. So I say it um, uh, to have to have a greater imagination, to have a greater thought, to see to see different things. Your, your images have to change. Your pictures have to change. Your pictures have to change. Your pictures have to change. But the word image starts with I. Imagination. Shame on you for attempting to borrow somebody else's thought. I'll give it, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit more. For unusual discernment, woo, or foresight, vision, vision. I pray that God opens up this eye of your eyes this year. Because some of us, man, if we be honest, man, we've wasted some quality time. We've wasted quality time. I, I, I say this. Um, uh, uh, maybe quality time, and maybe we didn't qualify who we were giving our time to. I said this um, in, in one of my good morning posts, you know, uh, uh, Maxine Waters came up with this. She's reclaiming her time, and everybody said that. They got T-shirts, they put it on mugs, bumper stickers and everything. And I said that at some point we have to get to a point to understand that you can't reclaim time. Right now, this minute is about to pass. Once this minute is passed, it's gone. You can cry about it. You can shoulda, woulda, coulda, but it ain't coming back. So the best thing to do is, is instead of reclaiming something that you can't go back and get, qualify who gets the next minute. And I'm talking about have some serious questions. What's your credit score looking like? What's your five-year plan? When you were in high school, did y'all wear helmets all day and didn't change periods? I'm just asking. No, I'm just saying, man, because some people glow ups, some people glow ups can confuse you. You have to ask them, you know. Is your mom and daddy, you know? I mean, you have to ask those serious questions. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Some of us, if we had a real test to give to people, oh, no. Some of us probably wouldn't have had kids with them. We wouldn't have got, we wouldn't have got married. Y'all wouldn't have been at their job carving your initials in their door if you really knew who they were. Yeah, some of y'all got saved from some real stalkery stuff. I acting like, acting like Joe on you. Man, that's a good show, though, man. Uh, <laughs> Unusual discernment or, or foresight, or foresight. Uh, now, there is something uh, that's called 2020 vision. Somebody say 2020 vision. 2020. Now, I don't really want to get into this whole thing, um, but I'll say this. 2020 is a term that measures a distance of how well you can see, how clear you can see, and how sharp you can see at a distance of 20 feet. What we have been led to believe that 2020 vision is perfect sight. It's not perfect sight. 
Having 2020 vision does not necessarily mean you have perfect vision because there are so many different tests that come that says that you have perfect vision because you can be able to see 20 feet down the line clear, but your peripheral mate, you, you may can't see, you can see in front of you and somebody can come hit you upside your head and you, and you don't even see it coming. That's what happened with many of us. That's maybe what happened with some of the bruises. That's what happened with some of the cuts that happened to us in 2019. We were so focused on looking down the street that we didn't know the person standing next to us really had it out for us. And we didn't think that we had to look. Some of us have blind spots. Yeah, yeah. So 2020 vision does not necessarily mean you have perfect vision. 2020 vision only indicates the sharpness or clarity of vision at a distance. <sighs> it's not perfect. So looking down, it may not be perfect. There may still be some mountains that I have to climb. There still may be some days that I don't feel like getting out of the bed. But if the vision that is in my mind is clear and is sharp, even though I don't feel like it, I will myself to get up. Has anybody ever been to those places? Well, you have to will yourself. No, you're going to get up out this bed today. You're not going to lay there. You're not going to wallow in this. You're going to get up and you are going to move. And it is because of vision that pushes us, that forces us to get up and do something when we really don't want to move. Matter of fact, there's a scripture that Solomon said. He said, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, where there is no vision. Uh, the Hebrew definition for the word vision is divine communication from God respecting future events divine communication from God respecting future events this is this definition is this word in this scripture so now let's make it make sense let's put this definition in the scripture so we can read it and see what God was really saying where there is no divine communication from God respecting future events the people perish the word perish means die what are you saying and Pastor Jay, if God is not talking to me about what's going to happen in my future, I don't really want to live in my now. The thing that keeps me moving, the thing that keeps me pushing, the thing that keeps me fighting, because if everybody had an opportunity to really just talk about what they have experienced over these last couple of years, somebody on the other end would probably be shocked that you're still here in your right mind. That's why you should never let anybody be critical about the decisions that you make while you walking in your shoes. Hmm. How dare you try to critique the steps that I'm making in these shoes? On my feet. My size. I haven't asked you anything about the decision that you made with the shoes that you got. <laughs> Let me just drop this off with somebody real quick. I said it before, but I think I need to repeat it again as we move into the, 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 the set of twenties. Touch your neighbor real quick, just make sure they walk to catch this, because this one's gonna be this this this, this dope right here, this dope right here. <laughs> if you would never if you would never, I'm not going to say nothing. If you would never ask them for advice, don't allow them to give you criticism. If I would never ask you for advice, how can you offer me criticism? you advice about your marriage because you don't have one so how can you critique mine I'm just I'm just uh, okay I was about to leave man somebody somebody eyes was trying to pierce me back there God has an amazing I want you to say this out of your mouth God has an amazing vision for my life 
I want you to experience that. I want you to experience God's 2020 vision for your life. Keep it right there. If the, if the definition for 2020 vision, um, which came from um, um, the American um, Optometry Association, so these are legit people, right? They're talking about 2020 is being able to see clear and to see sharp down a distance. I want to experience God's 2020 vision for my life. I want to experience, say that, I want to experience God's 2020 vision for my life. Yeah, for my life, for my life, for my life. I have four things. And the reason why I wanted to do this first, because this particular series is different from many other series. Because I want to introduce you to the mind of God. Man, the mind of God is so amazing, man. Woo! Give me chills and it's hot outside. It is, man. The mind of God is amazing. The mind of God is amazing. But I want to, I want to kind of, so, so how is going to be God's vision, um, for, 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 for my prosperity. Yes. We're going to talk about that this month. God's vision for my freedom. Yes. Yes. Whom the son sets free is free indeed. Yes. He sent his son not to condemn me, but to give me freedom. So if he came and he died and he rose again and the benefit of him coming up out of the ground with all power in his hands were for me to be free. How in the world was the Emancipation Proclamation delivered and I'm still living in chains? <laughs> Exposure expands expectation. Maybe I haven't been exposed to what true freedom looks like. Ah, true freedom ain't being able to go to the mall and buy what I want. Because there's a whole bunch of people that call retail therapy. They're dying on another side of their life. So they go to the mall and buy stuff that they really can't afford to try to impress people that really don't like them. That's not freedom. Above all things, I wish that you prosper and be in good health. As your soul prospers, God has a 2020 vision for my prosperity. God gets no love from you walking around being broke. Man, what's the what's the what's the um, um, the Cajun restaurant? Y'all can talk now. Um, what's the Cajun restaurant um, that they got the loud packs? Lotus, 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 Lotus. Okay, y'all know it. Y'all, yeah, y'all know it. Uh, I, I'm talking about Lotus quite a bit because, man, Lotus, it, 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 it's, it's amazing to me. Because every time I hear people talk about Lotus, they're saying negative things about it. Like you'll call them, try to put your order in. They don't start making it until you get there. I mean, just we don't have time for this. They always. Miss stuff, putting, you know, they, they, they don't have the Chick-fil-A anointing. They, they, you know, you can drive off from Chick-fil-A and know you ain't even got to look in the bag. They put your extra sauce in there you ain't even asked for. Ooh, Chick-fil-A living in the overflow. But man, Chick-fil-A got commercials. They got cows. Yeah, they got cows. They be looking at you crazy because they want you to eat chicken. Yeah, yeah. But Lotus does not have one commercial. Does not have one billboard. They don't even have a commercial on 97.9. They don't even have a commercial on 1360. But you know what? They opened up another Lotus in Sugarland, I believe. Pearland. Pear that's even worse. Pearland. I didn't even know we was out there eating Lotus in Pearland. It's a different type of customer in the lands. Woodland, Pearlands, Meyerland. I mean, it's, it's a different type of customer out there, but Lotus done made it all the way out there. <laughs> they, didn't just, they didn't just get there. They got there because somebody was talking about it. Somebody was telling somebody, girl, go to Lotus. You might have to wait 45 minutes. For some Cajun fried rice? Oh, but when you get it, it's worth the wait. 
Somebody else told somebody else, somebody else told somebody else, and they expanded to have multiple locations. Because the word about their restaurant continued to pass on, they had to expand their territory. I'm still talking about God's vision for our prosperity. The reason why many of us haven't really truly experienced expansion in our lives is because we're talking to people that have never expanded in their lives. So if you're always talking to people who played it safe, by default, you'll play it safe. If God wants me to be prosperous, I have to believe that he wants me to be prosperous. So these are some of the things we're going to talk about this month. We're going to talk about prosperity. We're going to talk about freedom. Um, okay. Um, I really want to talk about elevation, Maurice. Man, God wants us higher than where we are. But there are some telltale things that have to happen when you elevate. I think the reason why some of us won't elevate now, some of y'all get lifted, but y'all not elevated. Wow. <laughs> I think the reason why some of us don't want to really elevate is because we know that to elevate, we're going to have to separate. Wow. It's like a balloon. You put, you put air in a balloon. As soon as you put air in the balloon, the balloon is going up. The only thing to keep the balloon on the ground is you have to tie it on to something that's heavier than what. Ooh, when you release those heavy people that's holding you down, you all in your feelings and it ain't even your situation. They got you feeling. Ooh, every time you get off the phone with them, you got to go take them a leave because they won't leave you alone. <laughs> So we're going to talk about that. But, but, but before we talk about the specifics, I think we have, to talk about, we have to talk about in totality, how in the world do I experience God's 2020 vision for my life? I got four things that I'm going to give you and we're going to be done. Okay? Because these four things, now we will get to the specifics about prosperity. Because there are some specific things that you do for prosperity that you may not have to do for freedom. But now to get prosperity and freedom... And elevation uh, and healing. Yeah. Whew. I, and but, but we only got four Sundays. Y'all might please appease me. Let me let me let me roll this over until God tell me to stop. Because I, I, I really believe that some of us, some of us, some of us, we have been playing injured for so long, we don't know how it feels to really be healed. I listened to one of the, the sportscasters yesterday, and they were talking about um, um, Watson. No, not JJ. Watson, right? Deshaun. And that's your team. That brother be all in my phone. Soon, he be quiet when they be losing. But boy, when they winning, he be sending text messages with loud effects. Balloons born and were confetti. Brother Ron, too. Both of them. Y'all gonna get off my phone, keep that same energy this evening when we play the Seahawks. <laughs> whatever, whatever prayer y'all prayed yesterday, send one up for your boy. <laughs> but they was talking about Deshaun Watson. Everybody, everybody thought that the Bills were going to win, but it was one lone sportscaster that said, this game is going to be different. And they say, how so? They said that he was hurt last season. And, and they ended up saying that he's a totally different player when he's healthy. Could it have been the loss that you suffered last season? Was because you were playing with an injury? But God is saying this season is going to be different. It's the same player. Same jersey number, but the outcome is going to be different. 
because you were able to hide your pain when you put your helmet on. You were able to hide your pain when you put your pads on and nobody could see that you were really hurt. The way that they're going to determine that you're healthy this time is that when you get into the end zone, you're going to be able to dance a little bit. You're not going to crawl across, but you're going to run. Is there anybody in here say, God, I'm ready to be healthy this season? I want to be emotionally healthy. I want to be mentally healthy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whole. Woo. Whole. Whole. I lost my wholeness because I kept giving Negroes pieces of me that didn't know how to appreciate me. But in this season, I'm about to be selfish until I get healthy. And when I come out, trust you ain't going to get a chance to hurt me again like you did last time. Lord, make me whole again. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I see, that's why we can't put 60 second clips out there. Woo, Jesus. How do I, how do I experience God's 2020 vision for my life? The first thing is, is you have to, next slide, you have to believe that God has a vision for your life. And the reason why I capitalized yours because I wanted to go back with imagination, image, I. God has a vision for your life. Now I want you to make it personal and I want you to declare it. Say, God, I believe that you have a vision for my life. Now, for those of y'all that's just plumb crazy and expecting God to be even crazier in your life this year, say, and say, and say, and say, God, God that, vision that vision is huge. Is huge. Yeah. I don't know who came and told you wrong, who made you feel like your God didn't have nothing big when he thought about you. I want you to show you this. As I talk, just look at the screens. Your, oh, oh, let, okay. Uh, it said long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. Mm. He had settled on us as the focus of his love. Not a cow. Not a bird. Not a monkey. That's why I don't believe in evolution. I know in this scientific age, we think in Big Bang and we came from, no, we didn't come from no monkeys. Because if we evolved from monkeys, why are there still monkeys around? They would have kept on evolving too. But they showed up to the party late. I'm just saying, you know. Long before he even laid down the foundation of the world, he had us in mind. Uh, that's why the Bible said that there were seeds in the ground ah, and there, were, there was water uh, underneath the ground that was fertilizing the seeds before rain came down. But he did not allow the seeds to burst forth because he had not created man because man's job was to till the ground. Mm. Mm. He had it already there, but he didn't have nobody there to work it. Oh, that's a word for somebody. What you asking God for is already there. He said, all you got to do is work it. That's why you ain't got to be mad with nobody else. Just work what you got. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he has, excuse me, what pleasure he took in planning this. He planned it. He didn't just wake up one day. He took it, he took it, he took it, and he planned it. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Before, before the foundation of the earth was laid. And man, he did an amazing job with that. Now, okay, y'all can go. I want you to look at this. My amazing God. Turn it down some. This is all him. This is all him. This is all his fingertips. If he built this, he, he 
he's the grand architect. He's the, he's the, he's the great builder. Him, him, he woke up one day and began to speak this stuff into existence. What in the world makes you think that he's going to be shabby with you? If he put all of this detail into all of this, what makes you think that he's going to give you what's left? If he put all of this, all of his detail, his fingerprints are all over this, what makes you think that maybe you weren't planned with your parents, but you were playing with him? Everybody in here, everybody in here has a different fingerprint. Everybody in here, if, if something happens to your fingertips and they get burned. Even your teeth are different. They're able to determine who you are. You are separate from everybody else. And because of his majestic mindset, he has things specific for you that are greater than this. Greater than the highest peak in the world. Greater than the lowest valley. Greater than the deepest sea. He has this for you. So I need you to believe that the vision that God has for my life is bigger than small things that I may have been exposed. I need you to just say this. It's big, it's huge, it's great, it's wide, and it's mine. I don't have to be jealous of anybody else. If he did all of this, he can give you what you ask for and more. This is God. If God did all of this, don't just ask him for an apartment. Go on and get you a lot and build ten houses. Make up your own community. If God did this, don't just go back to school. Build a school. If God did this, don't just ask for a promotion, start a corporation. If God did this, he can do even more for you. But you got to believe it. You got to believe it. I wanted you to see that because I couldn't even put into words what my God did. And that's how your life is going to be. Somebody just going to have to look at you and see what God did. You won't even be able to put into words what God has done for you and your life. Man, this is God. You can go to the next slide. This is God. This is, this is God. This is God. Uh, say, it is written, eyes have not seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And many times we quote verse 9, and we hollow about verse 9, and we shout about verse 9, but the A clause of verse 10, that's where, that's where the rubber meets the road. It says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. That's why I ask that if you don't have a relationship with God, that you get a relationship with God, because that's the only way that he's able to reveal to you what he has seen, what he has heard, and what he's thinking about as it concerns you. Uh, next slide. Um, uh, ooh. For I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you God wants to prosper you and not harm you I know I know I know man in church there are some people who have taken this time behind this sacred desk behind this pulpit behind this podium and they use this time to just tell you that God don't gonna burn your hair off your eyebrows gonna catch on fire do it again you're going to hell If God's ultimate decision was for all of us to go to hell, why would he send his son? Right. Now, I'm not giving you a license to go out there and be reckless. But I am saying that don't allow um, the spiritual dogma associated with religion to keep you from having a relationship. God is more concerned about who he can be to you on a Wednesday night than he's concerned about how cute your shout is on Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. All right. Y'all got that one? Yes. Say it one more time. I believe, I believe that, God that God has a vision for me, vision for me. And, and it is, it is huge. huge. This is the second thing. Now, this is important as well. Once you know that God has a vision for you, you got to receive it. Yes. Yes. I believe it. Now I have to receive it. Yes, How many of you all have tried to tell God, uh-uh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> 
there's a story about this guy in the Bible. It was chronicled in Genesis chapter 37. I'm not going to really give you the whole story, but his name was Joseph. And he kept having dreams. He kept having dreams. God was attempting to show him what his, his life plan was, what he was going to do, how he was going to save his family. And God came in some very majestic ways, showed him stars, showed him sheaves of wheat bowing. And every time he saw it, he believed that it was what God was showing him. The Bible says um, that he, he dreamed, next line, he dreamed um, about this. One night Joseph had a dream. He had a dream. Man, how many times have God come to you and showed you something in a dream or in a trance or you just sitting minding your business and something come across your head and some of us in fear, uh-uh. You know, I... I I have determined this, and I want y'all to take a picture of this real quick, because when these things come up, as they will try to come up, next slide, I want you all to fight these things, because these are vision killers. These are vision killers. My young folk, I want y'all to take your phone out, man. Some of y'all too cool for school. I can't see much, but I can see y'all. I need y'all to be tapped into this, because if you don't have a vision for you, there's a whole system that has a vision for you. Everything that comes across the airwaves, everything that's on our television, everything that is on uh, from a music standpoint, everything that's on social media, it is coming for you. But if you know the game before it comes, you won't let it sway you. One vision, killer, one vision killer is I'm too young. There is no such thing about being too young. It's not. It's not. Um, um, the, 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 the Bible is full of people that were used when they were young. They had amazing visions. They were able to stand and do some crazy things. Before David became a king, man, he was a little bitty teenager. Didn't have no gun. Didn't let the AK spray. He had a slingshot and he stepped up and he killed one of the biggest enemies, bigger, big in statue and big um, um, uh, figuratively and literally towards towards God's people. And he stepped up and he did it while he was young. Remember, we just talked about uh, last week about Mary. She's 16 years old and she gave birth to Jesus. There was a king in the Bible named Josiah. I think Josiah was like nine when he got on the throne. There's a pastor named Pastor Jay. He started preaching when he was nine. <laughs> on the flip side, you're not too old. Yeah, that's right. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care how old you are. Man, go, go, go do it. Go get it done. Let me, let, let me give you this, man. There was this dude, there was this dude by the name of Caleb. Him and his boy Joshua, they went with, with 10 other guys. Um, um, now, you know, in today's term, you really wouldn't want to be considered a Christian spy. Uh, but uh, <laughs> they were spies. They broke in <laughs> to the enemy's camp. And they came back with intel. Bruh, we went over that man. I'm talking about grapes the size of your head, bruh. <laughs> And it was 10 other people who was like, nah, we can't do it. And so Joshua and Caleb, man, they're like, man, yes, we can. They were young. And everybody else said that they couldn't. They said that we can. Everybody that said that they couldn't, they died. Those two men stayed alive. And those two men went into Jericho. And these two men made it to the promised land. Now, the, the, the deal was for them to get their own individual land. As time had progressed, Caleb still didn't have no land. Caleb at 80 goes to Joshua. Hey, say, bro, I don't know how much long I got, but uh, I need my land, Doc. <laughs> Joshua was like, man, Caleb, do you know how old you are? Bro, you 80. You don't have it like you used to have it. 
man, why don't you just chill? It's it's because it's giants over there. Caleb say, man, I ain't scared of no giant. Bruh, I'm man, hey man, you give me the word. I'm going to go get my land. Joshua like, all right, bro. I'm telling you. You in the word, Pastor. It's it's giants over there. Now if you get over there, they beat the skin off you. I love you, bro. <laughs> Caleb was like, bro, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Matter of fact, I'm going to invite you to my housewarming party because I'm finna get what's mine. And the Bible said he went over there 80 years old and he drove the giants off of his land. What are you saying, Pastor Jay? It don't matter how old you are. If you want it, God will give you the power that you need. He will give you the resources that you need. He will give you the smarts that you need. Stop tripping looking at yourself. Man, I'm going to be the oldest person sitting in this class. And? Bake them some cookies. Come to class mom or something. They'll do your, they'll do, they might do the homework for you. Come on, college kids. You know how hard it is out there. A good meal, some cookies. I'll write your paper for you. You ain't even got to pay me. I think it was like an 84-year-old woman I saw. She just got her bachelor's degree. And she said that she was not going to stop until she accomplished it. What is it that is still waiting for you? You've given up on it, but it hasn't given up on you. Number three. Man, we let this thing here. Oh, this is a big one. Man, I messed up last time. It didn't work last time. That was last time. How many of y'all got y'all driver's license for real? <laughs> I know some of y'all be bootlegging out here. For real. How many of you all, how many of y'all parallel parked? Properly the first time. The first time. Oh! Some of y'all came doing now that got your hand up. I don't know. God, you know. I ain't even playing with them. I'll come for the congregation like Brother Charlemagne say. I tore up some stuff. But I kept doing it. I kept doing it. And in 2020, I still ain't perfected it, but I'm, I kept doing it. We fail. I know I didn't bump a couple of people's cars. I apologize. But I kept going because I had a vision. If it didn't kill you and you ain't killed nobody, keep going. <laughs> man, number four, man, it's, it's real too, man. Some people are like, you know, man, I'm new to this church thing. You know, I'm, I'm new to God, you know, man. Everybody was new at one point. Jesus went and got 12 disciples and he didn't go to nobody's church. He went and found brothers that was doing the work. He went and found fishermen that were about to go and take their fish to the you by we fry. They was about to go and get paid. And Jesus was like, come follow me. <laughs> it was tax season. He went and found Matthew. He was like, oh, man, you good with money. Come on, come follow me. He found Judas. Uh, he couldn't throw Judas back, though, because he needed Judas. Some of y'all trying to throw your Judas back. And that's why you hadn't ascended yet. Let Judas be Judas. You just stay who you are. Jesus ate with Judas, but he never allowed Judas to change him. He remained Jesus. You stay who you are. Stop getting out of character because Judas being Judas. Let them be Judas. They gonna hang themselves, but you keep on going. I'm insignificant. We gonna scratch that from the record. Don't ever say that. Don't ever look at your money. Don't ever look at what you have, what you don't have. Don't ever look at how you look, your size. Don't ever look at what your, 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 how you have matriculated in school. If you got a GED or, or it doesn't matter. You are significant to God. 
Man, it's some amazing people who had some horrible past that decided one day to make a change. And they are doing some significant things. I need you, say it out of your mouth. I am significant. Yeah. Number six is huge too. I'm not where I thought I'd be. And some of us, because we are not where we thought we'd be, we stopped making progress. Yeah, you're not where you thought you'd be, but if you don't move, you'll never get there. Touch your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, neighbor I'm, praying this year I'm praying this year that when you start it, you, you don't stop. Why, 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 did you, why did you say that, Pastor Jay? It's because every time, every, time we, every time we stop, something is telling us that what we hated is okay. I hated being broke, so I started to save money. I stopped saving money, now I'm broke. I've gotten to this point. So am I somehow saying it's cool to be broke? Uh-uh. I'm going to keep on going. I may not be able to do it at the rate that I would want to, but I'm going to keep on going, which takes me to number three. You have to declare the vision. 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 Going back to this guy, Joseph, when he had the dream, he would talk about the dream. Now, maybe Joseph talked about it to the wrong people. Who would have known the people that you stayed in the house with are people that you can't tell your dream to? Oh, it sounds like some of y'all had a few Joseph experiences. And some people with your same last name can't handle the vision that God has for you. But because you may be surrounded around negative people, that does not mean you stop talking about the vision. Because sometimes, listen to this, your ear needs to hear your mouth say what your eyes want to see. They all work together. Your ear needs to hear your mouth say what your eyes want to see. Let me say that again. Your ear needs to hear your mouth say what your eyes want to see because that's when it really counts. 25 people can come and tell you how beautiful you are, but if you never say it out your mouth, Your ear needs to hear your mouth say what your eyes want to see. Stop talking about what you don't have. This year, stop talking about what you don't have. Stop talking about how bad things are. Stop talking about what, 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 what may happen in the future. Oh, Lord. Oh, they're they going to lay off on my job. Who said that? They didn't even talk about your department. But if you keep on speaking it, it's going to come and find you. And you fool, I'll be the only person in your department getting escorted out. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You was talking out of turn. Can I challenge you to speak in the season that you want to see? Oh, my God. Speak in the season that you want to see. I want to be in a season of prosperity, so I'm going to speak as if I am in that season. I am wealthy. I am prosperous. I am a millionaire. I am debt free. I'm speaking in that season. And if I keep on speaking in that season, in this season, this season goes start to look like that season. Hallelujah. Oh, can I give y'all this one? This one, this, this one free. Just, 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 just jot this one down. Um, in 2019, see, Joseph's brothers wanted to have him killed. They wanted him dead. That's right. The first time Joseph went and told him, they laughed at him. <laughs> so you going we gonna bow down to you? <laughs> he had another dream. He went back and told the same people. He didn't learn from the first time. Second time made him mad, or we gonna kill him. Let me bless you real quick. 
Joseph thought that they would be excited when he came back a second time. It really made the situation worse. What are you saying, Pastor Jay? Okay, let me, let me wrap this up for you. They showed you who they were in 2019. Don't you get amnesia in 2020. All right, it's my life. Are y'all getting this? You got to believe that God has a vision for your life. You have to receive it. You have to declare it. And this one is huge. You have to defend it. You got to fight for it. Oh, because when God gives you a vision, that's major. He has been thinking about you since the beginning of, can you fathom, that's why I say, man, the mind of God is so amazing. Can you fathom that he has been thinking about you since the beginning of time? And when he releases that to you and shows you who he wants you to be and where he wants you to go and who he wants you to be around, you have to now start to, you have to receive it and accept it. Yeah, you have to receive it and accept it. It's, it's, it's like when I met Ray. Man, I like the ones, man. Um, when, I, when I met Ray, we needed musicians. I told this story time and time again, but I'm going to give it again because some of y'all may not have known. You came in and you saw Ray. Saw Ray with the dreads. I mean, when I first met Ray, Ray had a south side fade. <laughs> Little piece right there in the front. <laughs> but look where the Lord has brought him from. <laughs> we went different directions, you know. I had my little bob, you know, and now I'm bald. You know, but God has an amazing sense of humor. But when I met Ray, Ray wanted to play the drums. Because that was the instrument that he was most comfortable with. Yeah. Ray brings me this dude, YouTube sensation. He got a little YouTube page. You playing Leash Keys. You know, he playing little, little, um, little hip, hip, hippity hop bop stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm like, whoo, this boy is dope. And brought them all to the box, man, you know, and asked the boy to play. I start singing a church song. We not going to be in church singing Alicia Keys. Now, I know Kanye has made it cool to be remixing secular songs and making them churchy. Back then, that was a no-no. You know. Now, you can say his name, say his name. Back then, everybody getting put out to church. I'm tired of this church. But... And Ray on the drums, he trying to, you know, he trying to eat Ray, you know, and then Ray gets up off a drum, leans over the guy's shoulder and say, here, here's the card right here. Ray started playing it. I say, stop! <laughs> Hip hop mister, we don't need you anymore. There's the door. Thanks, <laughs> Ray, man, what in the world wrong with you, man? I mean, you know, I, I play a little bit, but you know, this, this, you know, this is where I'm comfortable at. I said, man, well, if you, if you just try, yeah. man, I believe, man, I, I don't know, man, but man, just, just, just try. And so, man, we started. It was what? I think it was a Wednesday night, though. It was a crazy Wednesday night. Oh, Landry was there, too. Man, that's my daddy called Landry. Man, the spirit of the Lord was so high. Man, I just started laying hands on them jokers. I mean, on the, on the band. I'm talking about just, poof. I mean, they was dropping too. It was a real drop. It wasn't no courtesy drop. Oh, don't play with it. Just because I'm cool, please know I got the, I got the real Holy Ghost. Oh! Don't play with it. Next Sunday, I'll, I'll be like Benny Hinn. I have my jacket. The whole, everybody laid out. (laughs) 
And man, I laid hands on Ray, man, laid hands on, on, on Landry. And man, I can honestly say that if you hear them now, you wouldn't even believe where they started from. What are you saying, Pastor Jay? God had that vision for you here when your vision for you was here. But sometimes God will stretch us from what we see ourselves and push us to a place where we're uncomfortable. But then when you look back, it's easy now. But what is easy now seemed hard, but it was always in you. It kind of goes back to the seed being in the ground, but you had to do the work. But the reason why I say defend the vision, because there's going to be some days where when it gets hard, you're going to want to quit. It's going to be some days where people who started off with you seem like they are making laps around you and you, you, you're, the, you're the tortoise and, and they're the hare. And you're going to, man, I, I don't want to do it no more. You're going to have to defend the vision. Not only are you going to have to fight yourself to keep going, you're going to have to fight the people around you that want you to stop. Going back to this dude, Joseph, I'm through, right? You can play. He, um, his brothers, they didn't kill him. They sold him into slavery, sold him into slavery. He gets to this whole new place. He gets a, a, a good paying job. He's working in this guy's house. He's working in his house, and the guy makes him his second in command. This dude, wife, wanted, he, this, this dude, wife came on to him. He's like, no, ma'am. Stay your distance from me, ma'am. So her feelings were hurt. You know, so then, you know, she, you know, oh, you know, he tried to rape me. So the brother get thrown in jail. But he's still in jail, but he get a promotion in jail. Who gets a, who gets a promotion in jail? <laughs> but that lets me know that your favor is not reduced to an address. Yeah. Wherever you go, you're favored. have been God wanted to see how he was going to handle that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Could you be in an uncomfortable situation and still know that there's vision on your life? Could you be in a spot where it seemed like that the worst hand that you could ever play has been dealt to you and still sit down and put your cards down, still in the posture of a winner even though on paper it looked like you're losing? you keep showing up when you want to give up yeah. wow what an amazing experience we just had at the word church i'm so excited that god has allowed us the opportunity to bring the word to you wherever you are we have people that watch us all across the globe and i'm thankful that we have come to you i'm asking you to do one of three things the first thing that i want you to do is share this message with somebody else we never know the people that we are in contact with may be one word away from their life shifting. Share it with them today. This could be the word that saves their life. The second thing that I want you to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure that the next time that a word comes from the word church, you're the first to know. And lastly, if you're in the city of Houston or surrounding areas, make sure to visit us at TWC. It is an experience that you have to experience yourself to believe it. All right? Well, I pray that the word of God that you heard today blesses you beyond measure. Take this with you. Apply it in your life and be all that God has called you to be. God bless you.